we, we, all, we all met at the, at the radio station, you know, WHPK, the university radio station. And um, we all share a similar aesthetic, you know, that, that's, that's shared by a lot of college radio stations as well. Similar mode of production and distribution as well, yeah. which may and actually mean more. It, 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 it basically um, comes out of this idea that, that, um, that stemmed from, you know, punk rock in the late 1970s, and that is um, cultural production outside, the, um, outside of the traditional culture industry, outside of the, the usual um, means of cultural production. Um, and not only outside of, but in opposition to. Um, all of the things that we do and work on and listen to and play at the radio station and in, um, you know, basically what we spend all our time working on are, um, are aspects of culture that are adversarial. So what is the bathroom? Uh, it's a literary magazine. Um, but it's the things that, that seem to have, have been the most successful this time around are not the literature so much as the essays. Its emphasis is more on articulating ways to resist um, the culture industry. And one of our primary, one of the things that we believe and that I think is central to modernist culture, modernist cultural production, modernist art generally, is that the only good art is adversarial art. And by adversarial, we have, that's, that's, what, that's what we do is we sit around and think up standards for, um, we sit around and think up ways of articulating this adversarial relationship and uh, think, up, think up ways of articulating uh, modes of resistance to mass culture. One of the sad things is that while people are aware on the surface that, that their primary role in society is as a consumer, I mean that's sort of a, almost a cliche, everybody knows that, okay? Um, people aren't aware that, I mean the, the, this, is, this is our central point, people aren't aware that the forms that they, that they the, the things that they do, that they think are resisting um, this role that they've been forced into, and Madonna is a good example here. People listen to Madonna records and think that they're really overturning the roles that they were born into, and they're really questioning, you know, blah blah blah. That these, that these, that this kind of, um, that this kind of rebellion and this kind of questioning is totally in line. Not to only totally in line, is totally almost dictated, almost planned by the, uh, by the, by the interests of, of consumerism. The consumerist economy nowadays doesn't run on conformity, and it doesn't run on people being forced to play by the rules, and it doesn't run on people wearing uniforms and standing in lines and that sort of thing. The, the consumer economy now runs on endless difference and endless deviance and endless overturning of the new and casting out the old. Um, and that's what we call the commodification of, of deviance or the commodification of dissent. And that's why mass culture now is absolutely 100%, I mean, it would be hard to find an exception to this, inundated with images of pseudo-rebellion and images of people being different and images of people being themselves and defining themselves against some, some rigid, colorless status quo. Just, and this is our technique. Just sit down next time you're watching TV and watch and, and count all the ads that, that try to uh, create some distinction between the, the colorful present rock and roll now. The Pepsi ads are a good, are a good example of this. The now, you know, the present, the, you know, the, uh, the eternal new, which is, you know, lively and always uh, overturning these, the, the, the dread, dull conformity of the past. And then they create this distinction between that and then this black and white vision of, of uh, conformity and geekiness and um, you know, these people who aren't good consumers. That's the vision of the good consumer now. The hip, Madonna, the Norman Mailer, uh, uh, the Norman Mailer archetype, that kind of figure is the perfect consumer now. Question, do you wonder what the youth of America is coming to? Answer, they're coming to NBC on Friday nights for the most exciting program on television. That's the person that, that, that consumer society, that business this culture applauds and holds up for our reverence now, not the man in the gray flannel suit. Being a, re being a, a rebel in terms of the products that you buy and the soda pop that you drink is, uh, is just being a pawn in the machine, just being a pawn for the... For the but it, is there any hope for us then? Yes, I mean, if, if and here it is. It here it is. <laughs> Read the magazine. Look, I'm telling you, uh, The Baffler is not the only hope, but it's an example. It's an example. My prescription is punk rock and The Baffler. Do your own thing. Cultural production should be in your own hands. The, uh, obviously, the only thing that's ever going to solve this is people thinking for themselves. The solution is just to think for yourself and to realize how you're being manipulated. To realize that, that uh, just when you see a TV ad, to realize what they're trying to do to you. I mean, to realize that, 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 that this culture is it's not your friend. It's trying to put you in a certain subjective position. It's trying to make a consumer of you. And it might candy coat this with like all this stuff about being a rebel, being young, but ultimately 
all that this culture is doing is trying to force you into an economic position and trying to get you to run up that credit card bill, you know, mount it to the skies.